Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Okay, let's get straight into this case study. Case study three, component swapping. This is a tool that isn't particularly traditional to the Six Sigma toolkit. Personally, I'm not a fan of having a traditional toolkit. Um, I just have a toolkit that solves problems, so I will often use lean tools, 5S, etc., to solve problems. This particular tool, component swapping, uh, isn't traditional, but it is a great tool when you have this particular problem that this particular company has, which is a finished item, a fully assembled item that has an end of line test and it fails the end of line test component swapping is a great tool and it's a tool that, that really answers a question that the Six Sigma toolkit cannot easily answer. So let's get into this thing, take a look. Here's the finished item. This isn't the finished product that we're going to look at, it's actually a pump made by Charles Austin Pumps. But the pump goes into these coffee machines. I'm sure you've seen them in various conference centers. And here's the problem. The pump is failing the displacement test. And now we have to answer this question. It's failing the disp displacement test. Is it the assembly process that's causing the problem? Or is it the parts that are causing the problem? Because unless we can answer that question, we will go to the wrong place to try and look for answers. And again, as I said earlier, component swapping is a great tool to do this. Whenever I've used component swapping in these situations, it has often taken me a little bit like you're going to see in this case study, straight to the answer in a very simple, easy to understand way. Now here's the traditional Six Sigma approach. This is the, the approach I would typically advise. We would go straight to the process. Process flow, cause and effect. The cause and effect diagram is going to identify all the variables in the current assembly process. We are going to check the measurement system. Is the measurement system okay? Is it telling us lies? We would do an MSA in order to do that. Once we've found the variables, we are going to identify them with a C, an N, or an X. C means they are under control. That would be good. N means they are noise or not controlled. Typically a bad thing. X means we'd like to understand them more and therefore we are going to experiment on them. But these two here are usually the ones that we concentrate on and we turn the ends into C's as we can using standard operating procedures and then we see what happens. That would be the traditional approach. But because this is a finished assembly failing an end of line test the first thing we have to ask the question is, well, is it the process or is it the parts? Here is the process. Two workstations. Looking fairly messy, so looks like there's plenty of opportunity to uh, get this process further under control should we need to do that. But before we step in, probably... 5S is going to solve this problem, by the way, if it was all about the process. Before we step in and do that, we're going to do a component swap 
and it's going to answer the question is it the parts and which part is it by the way or is it the process here are the parts there are one two three four five six seven eight parts in total although the component swap only swaps out seven because these two get riveted together and we don't want to keep breaking the rivets re-riveting breaking the rivets re-riveting that's not a practical thing to swap out so we're going to leave those assembled and we're going to assemble those as a little sub-assembly or swap them as a sub-assembly and that's a much more practical way to proceed without creating any problems constantly reassembling the uh, the components now here's one of the key things about component swapping that's very important we are going to select two samples we are going to select what's known as the best of the best often known as Bob we are going to compare it to the worst of the worst often known as well so what we are doing if we look at the distribution from the displacement test for a second and we put a spec on this thing what we are doing rather than looking at a good one versus a bad one anywhere either side of the spec line what we've done is deliberately gone all the way over here and all the way over here we've gone and selected Bob and we've gone and selected Wow and what we've done is created a huge big signal created a huge big signal between the two samples that we're going to use now that enables us to keep the sample sizes low we've only taken two pieces it's very rare to take such a small subset in order to find your problem this is only possible because you've deliberately selected Bob versus well now before we take the samples and do any swapping however we need to do this test that decides whether the problem lies with the parts or the problem lies with the process and we're just going to do a very simple thing we're going to take Bob here it is we're going to strip it down rebuild it and retest it and of course we get a little bit of shift we get a little bit of noise just one point in the case of that test we're going to do the same thing with Wow so we're not going to do any swapping we're just going to strip them down and reassemble them we get a two-point shift in the worst of the worst sample hardly any movement at all which is great news whereas the signal this big difference between the pair of them is what um, 80 more than 80 more than 80 points so the signal big D as it's known is 80 points 80 points large if you like 80 points the difference the noise one or two points that's little d when you do the ratio the signal is 27 and a half times bigger than the noise which is fantastic it beats the rule it needs to be five to one at least and what that's telling you is the problem is with the parts the problems in the parts now you can proceed with the component swap so here are the results you can see the seven parts that got swapped out the body the two end caps the diaphragm the PCB the eccentrics and the adapter plate and here's the is Bob Here's well and now what we're going to do in order to make this a little bit more visual and easy to see is we're going to put it on a graph and here are the results just to point out a second what these are representing Bob and well they are samples from either end of this distribution the best of the best is up here the worst of the worst is down here 
we've swapped the parts out and what we're looking for is complete reversal think how far these parts have been moved so although they haven't shifted fully to the same place they haven't gone all the way to the same part of the distribution think about where this result has come from it's come from all the way down here and been moved all the way up there by having the diaphragm swapped out so it's very easy to see what the problem is the problem lies with the diaphragm that is what's driving the good and the bad result massively in this case the diaphragm happened to be made on site by this company so we could go and visit the process very simply so ultimately of course we're back in six sigma country really because now we're back looking at a process. It's just not the assembly process that we first looked at. We're out on a molding machine and the molding machine is making the diaphragms. And it was very easy to see what the problem was once we got out on this machine. Down here, look, are some little shavings, little bits of rubber that the operator um, has created. And he's created them with this little tool here um, what's been happening is that they've run this machine they they haven't done any proper official routine tooling maintenance the tool is getting in a worse and worse condition and gradually it's deteriorating and it's producing flash inside the rubber diaphragm which means the pump won't work properly so instead of solving the problem which is tooling maintenance they've given the operator this rework tool here which he can slide inside the diaphragm and he can use to cut the flash out of the diaphragm but of course in cutting the flash out of the diaphragm what he's also doing is, is taking more of the diaphragm away than he should do and of course then the diaphragm isn't performing properly it's not sealing properly in order for the pump to function and the pump therefore is failing the is failing the displacement test and that pretty much is the answer they are going to now do some tooling maintenance on that particular uh, product on that particular tool and they're going to solve the problem and whenever people do component swapping they often say to me is that it is it that simple well obviously we were lucky when we went to the molding machine that it was that visual but in terms of finding the component that's got the problem when you use component swapping correctly when you have a fully assembled component a fully assembled product failing its end of line test component swapping is usually a brilliant and simple way of solving the problem yes that quickly it really is that quick hope you've enjoyed the case study i'll be back with another case study in around about a month hope to speak to you then